Hey everyone, we are Home From Oz. I'm Joseph. I'm Jessica. And we are here to share with you today a new interactive way of experiencing The Wizard of Oz. Awesome. So, oh, and by the way, this is kind of a new thing. We're on video. Yes. <laughs> Um, last year we had the opportunity to visit five different festivals from all around the country from New York to Kansas and everywhere in between including our home state here in Ohio and it was a blast. It was so much fun. We were looking forward to doing the same thing this year and hitting as many of the conferences and festivals as we could yeah. but then 2020 got canceled. So that didn't happen. So we're here in our living room and, and you're sitting there in your maybe in your living room and uh and we're gonna make this fun we're, right? gonna, we're gonna enjoy oz together so just because we don't have an actual yellow brick road to skip down does not mean that we are not going to enjoy this weekend to the fullest <laughs> skip down the yellow. have you seen how clumsy i am <laughs> it's probably so, there's a reason why we sit at our table and we play our games <laughs> it's safer this way I it promise. is much safer this way. <laughs> so sit back, relax, or stay tuned because we have a day full, well not a day full, no, no. we have like maybe half an hour to an hour <laughs> full of home from us for you and we are going to share with you how the game is played, how the game was made, who we are, what our background is. How did we come up with this? How did we come up with this? So it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. Hope that you'll stay with us. Ready to roll? Let's do this. Let's We're even gonna happen. play a game, so hold tight because we're probably gonna win. <laughs> so we will see. Let's go ahead and jump into some stuff from Home From Us. Uh, Jessica, how did you first engage with The Wizard of Oz? Well, like many of you, I don't remember my first encounter with The Wizard of Oz. I'm sure it was with um, the MGM movie, like most people. I've seen it a million times, watched it as a young child. I don't remember watching it for the first time. It was just always kind of a part of life. And the story really came alive to me in about 2003, 2004. I was in high school and I got cast in a, well, pretty poor like horrible production. <laughs> we had a blast with it, but my drama department had no money for rights on any show. And so we found um, just kind of some really ridiculous plays. And one of those plays was called The Wizard of Clods. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it or have seen it, um, but essentially it's kind of about this psychotic Dorothy who lands in the middle of a high school, Emerald City High, and she thinks that all of the students are characters from The Wizard of Oz and that she is in the Land of Oz. What? And so as she makes her way through the school, she names all of the, the students, you know, the, the mechanical student she thought was the Tin Man and the airbrained one must be the Scarecrow. And of course, the girl who had pigtails was Toto. And so I got to play Dorothy and it was one of the most fun roles I've ever played because she was kind of crazy, but she's also Dorothy and who doesn't love Dorothy? Everybody loves Dorothy. And so we got a chance, I got a chance to, to go through the story in a really unique way. And I even got a chance to sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow, but not well. Are you going to reprise it for us now? No. Uh, but let's just say it is the most off-key thing that you can ever, ever hear. I tried to, my goal was to hit none of the notes, and I think I succeeded. Um, She's good at it. So, yeah, what do you do? So, I don't think that there's a um, record of this production anywhere, so unfortunately, Joe, you'll never get to see it. <laughs> but um, I had a lot of fun, and honestly... Being a, being a part of the Oz universe there, I did not have any idea really how deep this fandom was. And now here we are, I'm not gonna do the math because it's gonna make me feel old, but however many years later, and we're actually a part of this Ozian community and it's so much fun. It so is. It's, I'm it's excited. amazing. I can't believe that I get to be a part of this as well, that we get to do this together and as a family. I first experienced The Wizard of Oz 
through the classic movie, but didn't re-experience it until I was an adult reading the books with my daughter. She was three or four at the time and I needed a story that I could read late at night where it wouldn't scare her, where it would build values. Um, and I feel like The Wizard of Oz hit all of those things and it really became dear to us. I remember reading the books and thinking, wow, these are, these are better than the movies. <laughs> And then we rewatched the movie and I'm like, wow, this is better than the books. And, <laughs> and they both stand so clearly on their own. To try to compare a book to a musical just isn't fair. I mean, we, we suspend our ideas of reality when we enter into this world. Um, but it's just amazing the immersive experience that we, ha that we get with both the book and the movie. And now, with Home From Us, the game. We want to give you a chance to immerse yourself in the story in a whole new way. And so that's what we're here to do. Yeah. One of the most common questions that we always get asked is, where did you guys come up with the idea to create something like this? And let me just tell you that although we love playing games and we love the story of the Wizard of Oz, a lot of the credit goes to this guy's mind. Yeah. <laughs> he is an entrepreneur at heart and his mind is always always going with the next idea and I'm telling you there's about 16 of them at any given time most of them don't come to fruition but this was one that really just kind of stuck we realized that we had something with this we enjoyed it the people who we are playing with uh, they were brought enjoyment by playing the game with us and so we were like this is something that needs to happen for real. Well, yeah, you know, having 16 ideas. I think we had two games to choose from by the time that we got to Home From Oz. And, and we really had to, to weigh the options, right? Do we go with our first game that we made, which you may hear about some other time, <laughs> but, or or do we go with The Wizard of Oz? And, and we realized that there really wasn't a, there really wasn't even a choice, right? Like this story is so rich and it has touched so many people's lives that it, it was it was kind of the, the no-brainer. And then, yeah, when we started playing it with our friends, I think we cried laughing <laughs> the first time that we played it from people else, with people outside of our family. And it was, it was really kind of a magical moment. We realized at that point that we had something special. And so we, we started building and testing and we made, we made card, we, we went to Office Max and got cards printed and cut them ourselves and- And laminated them. We bought a laminate, Ooh. we bought two laminators to, to speed the process along, but we laminated every single card. And let me tell you, it was a lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work. And we have learned a lot along the way. Um, we, we've we refined our, our designs, um, everything from you know, not enough white space, too much saturation, to um, going from stock images to the, the beautiful artwork that you see. Um, we're really grateful for our illustrator uh, to, to, to create just kind of something from from nothing, right? From an idea. Yeah, we were we were sitting here talking, and and we had the one other game that we had we had started play testing a little bit, and it was about princesses, and I am a princess at heart, so I love. I love all the classic princess stories, um, but we really wanted to do a, a journey type game. And so the first thing that came to mind was The Wizard of Oz. And I remember, I remember we were sitting in the car at one point and we were just, we were spitballing ideas and we were like, well, you, you journey, you journey through Oz, but, but what if, what if you had to get to Oz first? What if you had to play something to be able to even start your journey? And that's how the tornado card came about, right? <laughs> well, and then and then the feeling of, well, what would the monkeys do, right? Like, <laughs> what, what, what would the witch do? You know, what would this look like for us to, to take the story that we're so familiar with and, and be able to play it out? And not in a way that plays the same thing every time, but in a way where it opens up possibilities and, and no game is ever exactly the same. Yeah. I would, I would come over to, to his house after work 
and he would be sitting there uh, with with now my stepdaughter or daughter, and he would be like, "Hey, um, so we got a we got a new card. I, I did a new thing, <laughs> right?" <laughs> and the game really just kind of kept evolving, and um, we would play with different people. We would get so much feedback from our beta tests of the things they loved, of the things that didn't work. Uh, but we would sit up until two o'clock in the morning sometimes and just play and play and play and see if we could hit every single scenario. And we would we would be like, wait, I, I can't do anything because of my the cards in my hand. I'm kind of at a, you know, I'm at a standstill. Yeah. What do we do? And so through all of that play testing, we were able to refine the rules and find a way that the game works and the game plays um, each and every time. It plays pretty evenly. Yeah. which I think is one of my favorite parts about the game, is that um, you really have a chance to win no matter who you are. And so if it's your first time playing the game, you can win. If you've played a million times, although there are strategies, there's still a decent amount of luck involved. Yeah. So you can still, you can win or you can lose even if you are a pro at this. I, I have to say, one of my favorite things, and, and I wish I had an example from this year, 2020. Um, but one of my, my favorite things is going to a festival and playing with people at a festival. Saying, hey, can you can you come in? Can you stop for 10 minutes and play with us? And the look on people's faces, especially the children. Like it, <laughs> you get a boy at, at 11 years old and he wins. The look on his face of, I just beat the creator of the game is amazing or, or if they beat their parents oh right like that's another level dad and son sit down or daughter and dad like and it's just it's it's over the kid wins and the parents yeah. sitting there like wait a second and i have to say that that was part of our game design yes it was it, i mean from it the was beginning intentional. we designed this with a daughter even to to be a game that we would both or all three of us enjoy that we could play as two people, as three people, that we could invite friends over and play as four people and hopefully something six people, right? Like like just this, to be able to have a game that's this inviting um, and that's endearing because of the story that we all share through it. So you may be wondering how long this actually took to get this thing off the ground. When did this start? We said it's a new way, but how new is this game really? Oh, I, I got it. We started two years ago, right? It was it was around July, August of 2018 that we started. We got our first um, prototypes out and started beta testing in September. We were talking about doing pre-orders by November. We actually started taking pre-orders in May of 2019. We went to the Ionia, Michigan Festival. That was uh, our first official woo, woo, festival. Ionia. So we had, a, we had a tent and there was honestly not much there in our vendor space. There was a lot of stuff there at the festival, but in our vendor space, it was pretty much just a table and us and a copy of the game and a poster. But that and copy, a sign-up sheet. Like, <laughs> but that copy of the game was it was crucial. We had people who sat there, I think, for an hour and a half, <laughs> and played with us, and it was it was magical to see people who played with us and then came back Absolutely. to play more. Was just it was just unreal, and that was one of those moments where we knew we had something, and so we went to the Ionia Festival, we went to the Missouri Festival, we went to. Uh, Ohio and and Wamigo. We went to Wamigo. We went to Kansas, people, <laughs> and we we shared this. And and so to go from pre-orders in May to launching in August, getting married in July. I got married in July. In <laughs> uh, we had a really we had a really busy year last year, uh, and uh, to see people start ordering online in preparation for the Christmas season was just really cool. People who were putting us on their Christmas list because they they wanted this to share with their families. It was it was awesome. And so it, it really took from about July, August of 2018 to 
August of 2019 to go to market. And, and here we are today. I think it was late last year that we redesigned our box. So it started with this design. Some of you may have our green box. This was our first edition. And everything about the game and what comes inside is exactly the same. Uh, there's been a couple tweaks to the instructions, not as to how to play, but just to make Clarify. things a little bit clearer. Um, but everything about the game is the same. However, the box is different. Yeah, we, we decided to redesign the box because it, it matches our cards, and you'll see those here. You'll see those here in a minute. Also, isn't that cute? Yeah, it is. We love it. We just <laughs> we love we love our artwork. So here we have a brand new box of Home for Months, and we should open it up and see what we got. Yeah, let's show you guys what you get when you purchase the game. I have a pair of scissors. Okay. We're going to open up the plastic wrapping here. So we have our box description, Dorothy on the front. Let's open it up. Let's open it up. <laughs> there we go. All right. Start with our instructions. As you can see, we have detailed instructions. Don't worry, we'll be showing you how to play the game here in just a few minutes. It smells new. It is new. I know, but they can't smell it. That's, that's true. Okay. And now we have our cards with Dorothy in the bucket. Let me open it up. We have all the things. Check that out. 106 cards? 106 cards. Okay. Um, in addition to the cards that you get, which we'll go through, let's go ahead and show you some of the cards that you get in here that are not playable cards. So first off, you're going to see the rightful ruler of Oz herself, Ozma. So she's just showing you how you can follow us on social media. It's at home from Oz, anywhere you go. So Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also see our website. And on the back, a little teaser about what is to come in our bonus and expansion decks. Now, here's your quick game reference and your intermediate game reference. So the travel handbook, this shows you how to play the full game. So the game as it's intended for up to four players tells you what to do in here. Now, maybe you don't have as much time to spend on a game someday, or maybe you're trying to teach a new player how to play the game. We would suggest the quick game or even the intermediate game. And so there's a couple key things to change when you play one of these versions of the game. And so to do so, we go ahead and we give you all of the information as to what those changes that you need to make to the rules are. So you've got that little reference card. You also have two copies of these cards. So this goes through and is a quick reference guide. So if this is one of your first time playing the game uh, and you wanna know what do all the cards do, especially if you don't have a card in front of you that has what it does, you're like, what if I get that card? Or if I think they have that card, what does it do? You can check out one of these quick reference guides. So we have your progress cards and your trade cards, your character cards, your menace cards, and then quite a bit of details on the charm slippers because those really are the game changer. It's true. The time has come for us to share with you how to play Home From Us. I'm super excited. Jessica is going to be your instructor today. Um, before we get into the details of the basic objective. The objective is to make it to us, to make it through us, to get the slippers and make it home. Simple, right? Jessica, show them just how simple this can be. <laughs> so, like you said, Joseph, the object of the game is to journey through the land of Oz and to be the first one to make it home. If you're the first player to make it home from Oz, well, you win. Now, before you can make it through the Land of Oz, you have to get to the Land of Oz. 
You do that by playing a tornado card. You play a tornado card in front of you, you're all of a sudden in the land of Oz. At the beginning of the game, you and your friends will set a brick goal. To play the full game, you play to 30 bricks. With a 30 brick goal, you have to get 30 bricks and then play the charm slippers. You make it home from Oz, congratulations, you win. So here we are, we're journeying down the yellow brick road. We have a single brick, we have a double brick, a triple brick, and every time you make it to an equivalent of 10 bricks, you can exchange them out in the bank for a 10 brick card. So let's say I have 30 bricks in front of me and I'm ready to win the game. I play the charm slippers, I make it home from Oz. I win. That simple, right? No. Just like Dorothy's journey through the land of Oz was not that simple, yours won't be either because everyone at the table is trying to be the first one home. And so in addition to your yellow cards, which are progress, there are also red cards. Now these red cards are what we call menace cards and there's four of them. To start off, we've got the fighting tree. Now the fighting tree in the books, they grab Dorothy and their friends and they hold them up. In the 1939 movie version, they throw apples at Dorothy and her friends. Either way, it's gonna slow you down and make you skip a turn. Those flying monkeys, those winged monkeys, what are you going to do with them? They are the menace of the entire story at the mercy of the Wicked Witch and in the books controlled by the magic cap. We have got these winged monkeys that will steal your bricks. So when this is played on you by an opponent, they're going to choose a brick off of your road and they're going to take it for themselves. As Dorothy and her friends near the Emerald City, they fall asleep in the poppy field. These poppies are going to slow you down. You are not going to be able to move quite as fast when you are under the spell of the poppies. If an opponent plays a poppy on you, you cannot play any double bricks. You cannot play any triple bricks. You must play only single bricks. Now you must lay at least two single bricks before you can overcome the poppies and continue on through your journey in the land of Oz. Everyone's favorite villain is the Wicked Witch. So our Wicked Witch, just like in Dorothy's story, completely stops your progress. She is going to lock you up in her tower and make it so you cannot move anywhere. No bricks, no progress can be made or laid while you are under the spell of the Wicked Witch. That is, however, until the magic card is played. What card is that? The bucket, obviously. So when you play the bucket, you melt that wicked witch and you can continue on your journey. Your journey through the Land of Oz is not all about making progress and facing attacks. You can also protect yourself. You can gain protection by meeting some of Dorothy's classic friends, including Dorothy herself, along your journey. Included in your deck are one of each of these characters. The Tin Woodman, he is going to take his ax and he is going to chop down that tree, which means if you have the Tin Woodman and he is played to your road, no one is going to be able to use the fighting tree against you. You are essentially immune from those attacks for the rest of the game. The Cowardly Lion. Now, we all know that the Cowardly Lion has got some spunk. He is going to try to fight off those monkeys. If you have the Cowardly Lion laid down on your road, then no one will be able to take the monkey to steal those single bricks. However, your double bricks and even your triple bricks are still at risk. One way to think about it is the Cowardly Lion is still kind of cowardly and any monkey that's big enough to pick up a double or a triple brick is too big for him to fight off. The first companion that Dorothy meets along her journey through the Land of Oz is the lovable Scarecrow. The Scarecrow doesn't have a brain, however, and so 
he's not going to be able to fall asleep in the poppies. And so if you have the scarecrow, you are immune from the poppies. We can't forget about everyone's favorite, Dorothy. Dorothy, of course, knows how to use a water bucket. She is the one who the wizard tasks to get rid of the Wicked Witch. And spoiler alert, she does it. If you have Dorothy laid down on your journey board, that means that no one can use the Wicked Witch card against you for the rest of the game. Now there are a few more cards that you will find inside of your deck. These cards are going to affect the game in the following ways. First off, the wizard himself. Our Wizard of Oz is, well, a humbug. Just like he admits to being in the books, he's really not good, but he's not really bad either. So you'll notice that our wizard is blue. When a blue card is played, a trade happens. So in the instance of the wizard, you actually have to trade your entire hand with a player of your choice. Will this work in your favor or will it be a detriment? One way to find out. Give it to another player and see what your luck is. Revealing the wizard for who he truly is, the man behind the curtain, is Toto. So Toto is going to just like every other purple card, protect you. This one doesn't protect you from a red menace card. He protects you from the wizard himself. If Toto is laid down on your board and someone tries to swap hands with you using the wizard, you don't have to. You can switch, but only if you want to. Our final playable card is Glinda, the good. Now Glinda is going to help you along your journey, but she's not going to tell you how to get all the way home, at least not right away. And so with Glinda, she is going to give you an automatic 10 brick. That means that if you are playing the game to 30 bricks and you get one of these automatically on your road, you are well on your way to home. Outside of just taking you to the land of Oz, the tornado is a natural disaster and like any natural disaster, causes chaos. So this is what our nephew lovingly refers to is the chaos card. The chaos card forces you to randomly trade cards with the player on your right. Now, this happens all around the table, which means if you're playing with four people, every single person loses a card and gains a new card. This happens every time a tornado is played or discarded. It could be said that the most interesting card in the entire deck is the charmed slippers. These silver slippers hold a lot of power. Now, you know that the slippers, before they belong to Dorothy, belong to the Wicked Witch of the East, meaning that these shoes can be used for either good or for evil. Here's how it works in our game. First, you can get to your brick goal. If you get to your brick goal and then you play the charm slippers, congratulations, you win. However, you'll notice something a little different about this card. The color starts off yellow and ends up red. Well, the yellow are our progress cards and the red are our menace cards. So why is this both yellow and red? Well, the yellow, like I already said, is progress. It is your win card. However, if you have charm slippers in your hand and you would like to use it as a menace against someone, you can. Here's how it works. Another player is on their journey to Oz. You play this card on their road. When they receive this card, they lose everything. They go all the way back to their tornado, which means even if they were already at 29 or even 30 bricks, they lose it all. They go all the way back and start their journey over. Now, as a consolation prize, they get to keep the charm slippers, meaning you've just given them what they need to win. So now they keep those charm slippers right next to their tornado. All they need to do is get to the brick goal 
and they win. They don't need that extra turn to play the charm slippers because they're already on their board. Dorothy wears the charm slippers all throughout the Land of Oz and she never really understands their power until she uses them to make it home. So something similar happens with the charm slippers in the Home from Oz game. The power of the shoes are not completely realized until after they're used for the first time. So if I use the charm slippers against my opponents and send them all the way back to their tornado, losing all of their bricks and all of their traveling companions, then they've been used once, meaning any other time that the charm slippers are used on any other player in the game, they only lose half of their progress. Here's what I mean. I use the charm slippers on you. You go all the way back to your tornado losing all of your bricks. A couple turns later, you use another pair of charm slippers on me. I had 16 bricks on my way to Oz. Well, on my way home. I guess I'm already in Oz. But on my journey through the land of Oz, I have 16 bricks. You give me the charm slippers and all of a sudden, I only have eight. I go back halfway from where I am. Now, I also will still lose all of my traveling companions, but just like when I gave you the charm slippers, I get to keep these for myself. They stay on my journey board and they will be ready for me as soon as I get to my brick bowl so I can win the game. Now you've seen what each card in Home From Oz does. Hopefully you have a little better of an idea of how to use each card in gameplay. Jessica, that was great. Thank you so much for sharing that with everyone. Absolutely. I think we should show them how to set up and play the game. Let's do it. You ready like, to lose? Let's show them how to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. We just opened up a new deck and we're going to show you how to do the setup and play for two people. Uh, we have our newly minted Dorothy and Buckets. I'm going to take out the instructions that are with Dorothy. This does not have our 10 brick cards in it. We're gonna take those out of the bucket deck. They're going to look like, oops, this. See these 10 bricks? We're gonna take them out. It's actually easier to pull them out sometimes from the other side because they're green. These are gonna go into our bank right over here. We'll use those two swap out once we hit 10 bricks. So I'm also going to take out a tornado. This is for the mercy rule. So if I make it to the land of Oz and get 10 bricks, but Jessica hasn't even made it to the land of Oz, she'll take this card right here from the side and by mercy, enter into the land of Oz and be able to continue the game with me. It means that I don't get so far ahead that she just gets stomped. All right, we've taken out our 10 bricks. We've taken out our tornado. Let's shuffle them up. two-player game we are going to be playing to 30 bricks each player will be dealt four cards the game is played draw one play one so at the beginning of the turn you draw a card that card will either be used for progress or aggression and then um, depending on which card it is a card or cards may be discarded so we'll start out I'll deal my four cards Jessica you are the youngest and most beautiful you will get to go first. The rules only stipulate that the youngest goes first. This is true, but I make an exception for the most beautiful. Thank you. We've created a draw pile, and now we will have a discard pile. Right? So at the beginning of my turn, if there are bricks or buckets at the top of the discard pile, I can choose to draw from the discard instead of from the draw pile. However, I currently don't want the single brick. I'm gonna take my chances with the draw pile and I'm going to draw one card. Now, if I have a tornado, I can start my journey into the land of Oz. If you can see, I do not have a tornado. And so I am going to go ahead and I am going to just discard a card. And now it's Joe's turn. I'm going to draw my card 
and I do have a tornado. So that will be played to my journey board to begin my travels through the land of Oz. Now with every tornado, one card is exchanged. So I'm going to hold out my hand for Jessica and Jessica will hold out her hand and we will each take a card. Now I've drawn one, I've played one, and that's the end of my turn. Back to my turn. Again, I'm going to draw from the draw pile because I don't want the bucket. I still do not have a tornado and I am going to choose to discard. Draw one and play one. I now have one brick on my way through the land of Oz. That's one out of our 30 brick goal. Draw one and again, just discard one. Hmm. I'm going to draw one. Oh look, I have a friend. I'm going to play the Tin Woodman. He's gonna go right here above my progress. And this means that once Jessica is in the land of Oz, she will not be able to play a tree against me. I cannot play any menace cards against him, even if I had any in my hand, because I am not yet in the land of Oz. Again, to my turn with nothing to do, but discarding some bricks. I'm going to draw one, oops, and play one. Draw, and I got the tornado. So this means we're not going to be showing you how the mercy rule goes into effect, so we will show you that at the end of the game. I'm going to play my tornado, entering into the land of Oz. And every time a tornado is played, a card needs to be randomly swapped. Right, now I'll start my turn. Draw one, play one. I can draw one, and now I'm in the land of Oz. My choices are to either protect myself if I have any purple cards, to progress if I have any yellow cards, or if I have any red cards, I can choose to menace my opponent. In this case, I am going to choose to use the winged monkey to fly over here, pick up this triple brick from Joe, and put it directly onto my road. That ends my turn. Be careful with covering your board with your hand. Going to draw one card. And play one card. Draw. And play. I just drew a fighting tree. The fighting tree typically will skip anybody at the table's turn. In a two player game, I only have one choice on who to skip. And the card plays slightly differently. When I play the fighting tree, it will give me two immediate turns. So I'm going to play the tree and take my first turn. I'm going to play a brick. Now, Jessica, you play the tree as your turn. As my turn, I essentially get to put it all the way to the discard pile and that's and then, it. And then I take another turn. Now it's back to my actual turn where I'm going to draw and play. Draw, winged monkey. I'm going to steal your triple brick. The winged monkey goes to the discard pile. This has now given me 10 bricks, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm going to take these cards and swap them for a 10 brick card. Now, because bricks and buckets are the only ones that can be picked up from the discard pile, we're going to bury these at the bottom. Okay. Now that I have a 10 brick card, these 10 bricks cannot be stolen by a monkey. Haha, <laughs> the poppies. Jessica, I have some flowers for you. Thank you. I always wanted pretty flowers. I'm glad I get them sometimes in the game, oh. but I'm not. Because as you may remember, the poppies actually do not help me. They slow me down. Just like Dorothy and her friends fell asleep in the poppy field, I am going to get dreadfully tired. And now I must play two single bricks before I can get out of the poppies, before I can play any double, triple, or even the Glinda card. My turn. I draw 
and I am going to return the favor and give you some flowers, my love. Why, thank you. You're welcome. Hmm, it's always fun to travel through the flower fields. As you can see, I've placed this brick on top of my poppies um, to mark my journey through the poppy field itself. Uh, once I hit two bricks on my poppies, the poppies will go to the discard and I'll keep those two bricks. So I just drew and I'm gonna go ahead and put a single brick right on my poppies. It's up to you whether you kind of want to put it diagonally off to the side or immediately underneath. Just play your preference. Gonna draw. And I am out the poppies. And now I am also. Did you enjoy your time in the poppies, Ben? Uh, you know, it made me kind of sleepy. Oh, really? Very much so. Time for a nap. I just got the scarecrow, which means that I cannot have the poppies played against me. I am starting to feel like I shouldn't have let you shuffle the deck. You're so close to 10. I'm at nine. Just waiting. How about some flowers? So now the interesting thing, when I have the poppies played on my road against me, and I am at something like nine bricks, even when I lay one brick on the poppies, I cannot exchange those for a 10 brick until I am out of the poppies. Now, I'm going to shift this up a little bit just to make sure you guys can see still what Maybe is going on. Maybe come a couple more inches. Oh, my boy. There we go. Now, as you can see, and I, and I wouldn't typically say this out loud if I wasn't showing you guys how to play, um, my hand at this point doesn't really do me a lot of good. I would love to play the fighting tree against Joseph, but I can't because his tin woodman is protecting him from that tree. However, if I had two of the fighting trees, I would be able to overcome his tin woodman. This can be done with any of the menace cards. If you have two, they can overcome a purple card. Their corresponding purple card. Their corresponding purple card, correct. So I am going to shake things up a little bit. I'm going to discard a tornado, and since he now knows where all of my cards are, I'm going to give him a chance to draw one from my hand, I draw one from his hand, and now it's his turn. Why, thank you, honey. You are welcome. Going to draw one. Oh, look at that. And I'm going to play one. Hey, let's swap hands. I played the wizard. The wizard goes to the discard pile, requires a swapping of the hands. A wizard cannot be discarded, though, without being played. So, as my turn. Again, not much that's going to do anything, but I think I want my hand back before he plays that tree on me. So I am going to play the wizard right back. Oh, bah, humbug. And get my cards back. These are crummy cards. I'm going to draw. This one could be helpful, but I think I want a chance at taking that single brick she needs to get out of the poppies. Let's shake things up a little bit. Okay. Oh, I didn't get the single brick. But you got the tree, which he will probably use against me very soon. Me? Never, right? So, going to go ahead and use a single brick. Work my way out of the poppies. All right, I'm going to draw, start a turn. I don't think I want this one yet. Let's try this. Told Let's you. skip your turn. Okay. I don't think I want anything here. I'm going to draw to start my turn. And then let's swap hands. Oh, that works much nicely. Right. You discard the fighting tree. I take my second turn. We'll play that right there. 
Okay, so I know what I have in my hand. I really need that single brick to get out of the poppies. So I am going to play a tornado and hopefully make absolutely no changes whatsoever. Well, that's, what <laughs> that's what we ended up trading. All right, draw to start my turn. Ooh, one of these. Hmm. Let's go this one. Now, I have a winged monkey. I can use this winged monkey to go and steal one of his single bricks to be able to use on my poppies. This effectively gets me out of the poppies, so they go to the discard pile. And if you can see all of the cards that I have here, I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So I am going to go ahead and take 10 of these, again, burying them at the bottom or near the bottom of the discard pile, taking a 10 brick from the bank. And now I have 11 bricks on my way home from us. Chen's your turn and starts mine. Oh, if only I had gotten this one turn earlier. But yet you still steal my bricks. Absolutely. I am just going to keep on chugging on. You, you do that, babe. Except now I can't. So, as we know, the Wicked Witch stops all progress. I'm essentially locked in the Witch's Tower until I use a bucket to melt her. Now, as my turn, I draw, and luckily, I have this in my hand, so I'm going to discard this. I am choosing to discard the bucket underneath the witch. I am running out of room. I'm gonna slide this down here. Slide these over so that Jessica can see my bricks. And so can you, before we run out of space on the table. Okay, so now what I'm going to choose to do um, is because I'm playing the two player game, there is a little bit of strategy in being the first to send someone else back. And so that, is what I'm going to do. I am going to give a pair oh. of pretty slippers to Joseph. Being the first one to receive the slippers, Joseph loses his 10 brick. He loses all of his single, double, and triple bricks. Oops. He and also loses friends. all of his friends. Bye bye friends. Go away. He gets to keep the shoes. I get to keep the shoes. Thus ending my turn. All right, my turn. And let some, hmm, hmm. What do I do? What do I do? Let's see if she has anything useful for me. Swap it up. So now, there's a card in that hand that I really want back. I'm going to use that tornado in hopes that I can find her. All right, so that's a thing. I'm just gonna go on my merry way. And I am going to play Glinda the Good. Glinda the Good gives me an automatic 10 bricks. So I'm just gonna move these over just cause I like to keep all my 10 bricks together. Makes mathing easier. So now I have 25 bricks on my way to the land of Oz. If I receive 30 bricks and then lay down charm slippers, I will win. And I will continue up the road. I am going to go ahead and take that three brick because it looks nice and pretty. Whew. 
All right, Jessica is at 28 bricks, which means that if she has the tree, the slippers, and a two brick or three brick card in her hand, she could win on her next turn. And that, my dear, would be tragic. Oh. Now, as the second player to receive the charmed slippers, I do lose my friends, but I only lose half of my cards. So like Joe said, I have 28 bricks. 20, six, 28. So I am going to go down to 14 bricks. Here's how it's gonna work. 10 brick goes away. And then I have not, I do not have the ability to make this into 20 or into 14 evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get rid of a three and I'm going to get rid of a two and I am going to fish out a single brick. I just fished it from the discard pile. And now I have 14. I keep these charmed slippers. So those are going to take me home uh, when I get to 30, or they're going to take Joe home when he gets to 30. Now, since we both have the charm slippers already on our journey board, it's essentially a race to 30. That ends my turn. Oh, wait, that no, actually that ends does not. my that turn. That ends your turn. That ends your slippers. Of note, Glinda was left on top. This is okay. No need to squabble. Only bricks and buckets can be picked up. So this is just a reminder of what you've lost. Thank you. But that's okay because I am feeling a little wicked and I would like to make sure he doesn't get any further than a one single brick on his road. And I say get rid of the witch. Well, it was a good try. Here's so. hoping she doesn't have another one. <laughs> I'm just going to build my own road. I'm going to pay attention to myself for a while. Self-care. You, you do that. Ed. You do that. He's taking my stuff. Okay, I am going to put down Toto. So Toto plays a little bit differently in the two player game. We found out during some of our testing that Toto actually works an advantage for the person who doesn't have him if it plays as normal because that person can then discard the wizard with nothing actually happening. So with Toto, Joseph cannot play the wizard against me to swap hands. However, if he would like to discard the wizard, he can. And, and it just puts in my, the ball becomes put in my court as to whether or not I want that wizard to be active. So he discards the wizard and I say, yeah, I want to swap hands. Or no, I, I want to keep what I've got in my hand. The decision becomes mine as the proud owner of Toto for this journey. Hmm. Those darn monkeys. Take all your stuff. So, taking a red back. Hey, you, <laughs> leave that brick alone. Swapping things up. I'll take it. It was a win for me. And I cannot have Toto, of course, without Dorothy. I am I am no Mrs. Gulch. I am not going to separate her from her precious pup. So now I am protected from the witch. I'm gonna play this three brick. And I'm gonna move on down the road. Ooh. We do not like how this is shaping up. <laughs> I told you I was going to win. So the fighting tree against me again. That's his first turn. I discard the fighting tree as mine and Joseph takes his second turn. Take my second turn. It's my second turn, I'm going to play the <sighs> tree. <laughs> <laughs> There's only four trees in the entire deck. All four have now been played against me in this game. 
Well, and you can only play a tree against somebody who has the tree. You had just discarded yours, so it's uh, it's my turn. I'm going to take my first turn. Yeah. And I'm going to play the Cowardly Lion. Which he gets every single time we play, no matter I, I just don't I just don't get it. My turn. I'm discarding my tree. And I am playing a monkey. And I have seven, so I think I'm going to commandeer a three, which puts me uh, over ten. I will begrudgingly give him a ten brick. And it is your turn. And it is finally my turn. Now, unfortunately, I can't steal that three brick back. And the ten brick, <laughs> they're essentially, they're laid. So they're laid on the road. They're laid on the journey. The swing it monkey is not going to be able to pull them up. So I am stuck discarding. Now, since both players already have the charm slippers, these have essentially been deemed useless for the rest of the game. I'm just going to discard them. And I believe I will take no! your single brick. And so once again, I'm stuck with the same thing. Now, this winged monkey cannot come and take his single brick because the cowardly lion protects all single bricks on his road. So once again, I'm going to make a discard. Hmm. Now, I have two monkeys. So I can make the choice. I can take both monkeys and steal a single brick. Or I can take one monkey and take the triple brick. Just to show you guys how it works, I'm actually going to take his single brick this time. So two winged monkeys go to the discard pile. Essentially, one is getting fought off by the Cowardly Lion, leaving the one free to come over here and steal the single brick and fly it over to my road. Both monkeys then get discarded, and the turn moves back to Joseph. As you can see, I only have three cards in my hand, but I'll remedy that on my next turn. Hmm. I think this is the right choice. Flowers for me. Now, with only three um, cards in my hand, useless as they may be, I will now draw two cards, bringing my hand total to five, as it should be at the beginning of my turn. And I'm going to play one, which is going to have to be that. Ooh, honey, really? Yes. Hey. A witch for you. We have effectively run out of a draw pile, so we're going to shuffle up this discard pile. It's up to you. Um, because we did not use the mercy rule and this tornado is out of the game, you can make the choice, house rules, to either keep that tornado out or shuffle it in. Mmm, fresh deck of cards. <laughs> All right, we did not have a brick or bucket at the top of the discard pile. We don't need to put one down. Let's keep the, let's oh, keep let's the discard keep it the on the same. same. Okay, I see how that goes. Yeah. I like consistency. Consistency, hey. Hmm, can't do that. So let's do this. Okay. Now, I can't use the winged monkey to steal his triple brick because I'm currently in the poppies, and so I can only lay down single bricks. Therefore, the winged monkey is currently useless to me. I don't really want to discard that, so let's discard one of these many, many buckets. Hmm. Well, that seems like a good choice. Protected by the Cowardly Lion, she'll need two monkeys to steal that single brick to get out of the poppies. Which, luckily, I have. So again, one gets fought off by the Cowardly Lion, while one steals that single brick, dropping it off on the poppy field, and they both go to the discard pile. Something of note, the winged monkeys can drop single bricks onto the poppy field to help you progress out of them, However, the winged monkeys cannot steal from the poppies. So if Joseph has 
a winged monkey in his hand, he could steal this brick, this brick, or this brick from me. However, this single brick is currently safe until I get out of the pots. Again, I'm down to three, so I am going to double draw. And I would like to take some turn, so I am going to give Joseph the fighting tree, take my first turn, don't have what I need. I'm not sure if he has what I need, but I don't really want to give him those cards. So as my first turn, I'm going to discard the water bucket. He's going to discard the fighting tree. I'm going to do this and I'm going to play the scarecrow. It hurts. I'm sorry. Now something of note, <laughs> the scarecrow does not get me out of this poppy field. I still have to work my way out of these poppies. However, he will prevent me from having to go back into the poppy field at any point later in the game. Now I could choose to pick up the bucket since bucks, buckets and bricks once again can be picked up off the discard pile. But with Dorothy and with a bucket in my hand, that is not something that I necessarily feel like I need. So I'm going to once again, take my chances from the draw pile. And I'm actually going to choose to discard this water bucket because I'm feeling like I'm a little bit out of choices. I am thankful for the Tin Woodman traveling with me again. And this witch is going back on to Joseph. I'm going to pick up this bucket from the discard pile and send this witch right away. Okay. Now, what to do? I don't know. I don't like any of my options. <laughs> and sometimes this does happen. Um, the, the game is intentionally made to be a little frustrating this way. I'm just going to walk you through kind of what's going on in my head right now. The triple and the double brick are useless. I can't play them without getting out of the poppies. And if I discard either one of them, Joseph's going to be able to pick it up straight off the top of the pile, putting it onto his rope. The winged monkey is also currently useless. I could pick up Joseph's triple brick if I wasn't in the poppies, but since I'm in the poppies, I can't do that. I could just get rid of the monkey. I also have two wizard cards. So I could use one wizard card and swap hands with Joseph, but doing that would give him the winged monkey, my double brick, my triple brick, and this wizard, which will be useless to him because I have Toto. All of that being said, I think the best choice for me right now is to actually discard my monkey. Hmm, bye-bye, monkey. Ha-ha! I finally got something I can use. The single brick takes me out of the poppies. Those make it to the discard pile. And I can finally breathe a sigh of relief, hoping that I can continue on my road by the time it gets to my next turn. All right, I'm going to draw. This could come in handy. Let's let's try this. Let's take your triple brick <sighs> and keep you from getting 10. I was getting close. Okay, so I am going to kind of replenish that triple brick and just see what I can do. For which I am very thankful because I did not have a triple brick, but needed one on the board. And you may be wondering why I was holding on to these monkeys earlier. And it was for an opportunity just as this. That brings me to 10. Protects the three bricks that I had laying out. Solidifies them here and gets me 20 out of 30 bricks on my way to the end. Right, Jessica has seven bricks right now, which means that she is in striking distance of getting to that 
10 mark. He's got all the monkeys. I'm going to take a single brick so that it will take more for her to steal it with my cowardly lion. Your turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A triple brick brings me Ooh. to a 10 brick. Ouch. So now we both have at least 20 bricks, and we tend to refer to this part of the game as the end game. Whether you're playing with two, three, or even four people, we find that anything can happen at this point. Let's see what does. Mm -hmm. Things also seem to usually get quieter and more intense once everyone is in the end game. Things are tied. He had to discard that. He can't play it because I have Dorothy. And if he only, if he had a second witch in his hand, he would have played two to overcome my Dorothy and put me under the witch's spell. Also, I didn't want you to get the witch in the tornado. Which I may or may not have in my hand. May or may not have. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep moving down that road. Now please note that both of us have 26. Now that means Joseph with a tree and the right bricks could win in one turn. I would have to have two trees to overcome his tin woodman to be able to win in one turn. So this winged monkey is going to steal the double brick. Oh no, don't do that. And that's getting close to the end of the table here, so I'm just gonna kind of squish these together. That is not what I wanted. So that puts you at 28. Correct. Eight. And this puts me at 28. Now part of me really wants to swap hands and see what he has and to give him all of these cards, which aren't going to do him very much good. However, I don't want to give him the single brick because he has the Cowardly Lion and that means that it's essentially one step that would be very hard for me to overcome. Um, and to get back. He's trying to build his road mainly with single bricks because I'm not able to steal those. So I'm going to just take one more step through the Land of Oz <sighs> and just kind of hope that he doesn't have the ability to win on the next turn. What do I do? What do I do? She comes through. She comes through in the end. Oh. Ah! Oh. <laughs> That automatically gives him a 10 brick, bringing his total up to 38 bricks. And then I made it home from Oz. That this is, is more amazing. than he needed to win. So that is how to play the two-player game. We dealt out four cards each. We set our 10 bricks and a single tornado off to the side. We declared our 10 our 30 brick goal, right? And I've met my 30 bricks. I got my charm slippers. And you, you even sent me back first. I sent him back first, and I still lost. Whew, but it was close. It was very, it was so very close. close. Oh, we hope that you guys enjoy the game as much as we do. So let's go ahead and tell them a little, let's show them how the mercy rule actually works out. Whether you're playing two, three, or four players, at the very <laughs> beginning of the game, you want to pull out tornadoes. Now, we pulled out one tornado because we were playing with two players. It would be the same if you were playing with three players, but if you're playing with four, you're gonna actually pull two tornadoes out of the deck. 
Essentially, it's half of the amount that you need for the amount of players that you have. These tornadoes will sit off in a bank to the side, and as you move through the game, if you do not have, let's see, does that work for you? Well, I, th I think it does. Okay, so get rid of this. Obviously, we haven't really, we haven't really shuffled this at all. We're just gonna kind of show you how the game works. Cool. So I'm gonna go first, and I'm going to play my tornado. <laughs> and I'm As you going can see, to. You haven't shuffled. <laughs> I'm going to draw. Oh, I never drew to start my turn. Oops. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to draw. Oh no, I don't have a tornado. I'm going to discard. I am going to draw to start my turn, and I'm going to start building my road. I'm still not in Oz. I'm going to take this triple brick. No! So it was at the top of the discard. It's fair game. I have six bricks. Ugh. Mm, what am I supposed to do? I am just going to keep collecting these bricks. No, you, no. You're, <laughs> you, can't, you can't just keep doing this to me. I can, though, and I but, am. But I have no tornado. I, I have no tornado. <laughs> No! And here we go. I'm going to take this triple brick. This gives me 11, so I'm going to take 10. And there is no bottom of the discard at this point in the game. So I would essentially, pretending I'm shuffling, I would shuffle them into this part of the deck. Okay. Or I would set them off to the side. Um, actually, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I would probably place it off to the side by the 10 bricks or the tornado to be reshuffled in with the um with the actual with at the reshuffle that doesn't usually happen though however i've got my 10 bricks i take it from the bank now i have 11 bricks on my road to oz and it's joseph's turn it is my turn and the mercy rule just kicked in so rather than drawing from either the discard or the draw pile i pick up this tornado and it goes straight to my journey board now, something that we didn't do when I laid my tornado, because, well, you would think we would know how to play the game by now, but apparently sometimes we forget, but we would trade a card. No. I'll no! <laughs> oh. All right, and this was my turn, so it's your turn. And then, so gameplay is just gonna continue as normal. So I would take his Tin Woodman, and then we would continue on with the game. He gives me pretty shoes. <laughs> Sending me all the way back to the beginning. And sending my friend away from you, the one that you stole. <laughs> and then we're essentially kind of at the uh, at the beginning of the game, pretty much. Except now I have the shoes, so I can no, just race to no, race no. to thirty. Slow you down every step of the way, woman. So that's how the mercy roll works. Earlier, we got a chance to share with you some of where we've been as home from Oz, but we have so many things on the horizon that we want to make sure you know about. Where is Home From Oz going? Well, one of the things that some of you know about is our expansion deck. Our expansion deck allows you to take the two to four player game and play with up to six players. So this is something that you can purchase in addition to the game that adds a, some extra cards. It gets the ratio right. Um, so you can play the game still in about 90 minutes with now up to six people. Yeah, which is great because you can, you can invite people for a double date. You can invite two couples for a double date, and if one of them bails, you can still play, which is great. If they both show up, awesome, you play with six. So with, with the bonus deck, we were hoping to get that out early this year, if not late last year. However, we haven't been able to get the ratios quite right. We are so close, so close. to that. But then Corona happened, and we had to kind of cancel all of our beta testing. So although it's really close, we just didn't get it quite right before this pandemic hit. And so we wanna make sure that we are giving you guys the, the right product. Now, why are the ratios important? Oh, why are the ratios important? Well, because when you start tweaking the amount of, of attackers, so disclaimer, this game can be a little bit aggressive if you haven't already, if you couldn't already tell. Um, and so the, the more monkeys, the more witches, the more poppies that you put in, kind of the longer it takes you to trudge your way through Oz. Um, and we don't want this to be 
a, you know, a burden, right? We want, to, we want it to be a fun game that everyone, that everyone can enjoy. We did have one beta test game that lasted for, what, four hours? Something and we had to like call. that, we called it, because no one was even close to winning. Now, granted, that was quite a while ago, and that one even had some of our bonus cards, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, but that had some of our bonus cards in there, too. So full disclaimer on that one. But the ratios were so They were so, they were off so off. That it just, it was, it was no longer playable. Um, unless, you know... Everyone hates Monopoly because it takes 18 hours and you hate your family by the end of that. We didn't set out to make a game like that. No. So Monopoly is my favorite, but we want Home From Oz to play in 90 minutes or less every time, no matter how many people you're playing with. Yeah, and so we are, we're perfecting this six player game so that you can have a similar experience to the four player and be able to adapt to the number of people who showed up that night. So yeah, so we should have that out very soon. Um, you can follow us on social media um, to find out when that's going to be. But as soon as we can get some beta tests back up and running, we should be able to get those cards in your hands. Okay, okay. So uh -huh. tell them about the bonuses. Oh, the bonus decks. <laughs> if you purchased the game before, you've seen um, the, the card that tells you to look out for some of your favorites, like Languidere, or Ozma, or the Sawhorse, or the Winkies. So to look out for characters like that in upcoming bonus decks. So we're excited to share with you that we are in the process of beta testing our first bonus deck. So we are going to share with you some of the images. Now the first one, uh, this one actually may or may not be in this deck because like I said, we're beta testing and part of that has to do with how the cards interact with one another in yeah. the gameplay. And so Ozma, the rightful ruler of the land of Oz herself, um, we, we already have uh, the artwork for that. You've seen her on one of those cards that was um, kind of teasing some of the stuff that is to come. But Ozma is going to be a part of the game. She is going to be what I think possibly even the most powerful card. However, that can be debated. So um, she has a really interesting role to play in the bonus stacks. Very powerful. So. Very powerful. We are going to show you just a few glimpses of cards that may be coming out in the upcoming expansion. The Emerald City. The Hot Air Balloon. And the Munchkin. One of the things that we love about Home From Oz is that it actually gets you out from behind a screen, which we're all thankful that you are sitting behind a screen today, by it's the way. True. But it gets you out from behind a screen and it gets you in front of real people to play a game with. Now, however, especially during this time, we realized that getting out and playing a physical game with people in close proximity to you is not always possible. So we have some really cool digital things coming your way. Absolutely, Jessica. We are excited to bring an online experience, both with our game and with our artwork. First of all, we are currently working on the Home From Oz game app, which means that you can play against your friends uh, remotely. It's, it's kind of cool, you know, get little notifications like, hey, it's your turn. Play your brick or your witch or your monkey or you know, get through us. That's the goal. <laughs> we are saying this this mobile app means a lot. It means that if you're in Chittenango and you want to play with the Oogaboos in Washington State, you can do that. Um, you don't have to be in the same place to enjoy this interactive experience with the Wizard of Oz. Instead, you can pull it up on your phone and play your cards there. And uh, we think it's fun. We're designing it to be a two-player game so that you can still enjoy the three, four, six player game um, when you have the time and availability. During this season of COVID, play online. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking okay. of mobile phones, we have an awesome app that's going to come out before the game that will let you enjoy Oz with your friends. So we actually just got this approved through the Apple Store and we are working on making sure that you've got some really cool options. Now the app is called Ozmoji. Ozmoji. 
So, you know when you're talking with somebody and you need something to really get across your sentiment? Most of us just go to our emoji bar and we select an emoji. Some people use Bitmoji. Well, and some people even use the sticker apps that you can download. We want to give you another option. Osmoji. Osmoji. Make sure everyone in your life, or at least those people who you text or message on Facebook, know that you are a true Aussian. Yeah, like BRB, WTF, LOL, LOL. Yeah. So right now we are working on getting our beloved characters into emoji form. So maybe it's, you know, the Tin Man, but he's got those hearts right over his eyes. So you are going to be able to replace some of your favorite emojis with some of your favorite characters in the forms of those emojis very, very soon. Yeah, or like, you know, I, I think of the lion in a be strong, right? Like, <laughs> that'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. So we're actually taking ideas right now. So if you have any ideas as to an Osmoji that you want to see happen, let us know our way yes please do and you will see that now we're wanting this to be kind of an ongoing constantly updated app for you so when it first rolls out it's only going to have a handful of emojis the uh, classics yeah it'll it'll give you a chance to share your favorite characters and to share just some of those basic what us back in the day knew as emoticons now we want to share those with you, but we want this to be an ongoing, expanding library, eventually with a search function and everything. So you yeah. have an Osmoji for any and all occasion and emotion, sentiment, all of the things you will have at your fingertips. We want it for all the feels, right? Yes. All the feels. Now this is going to be a free app. And so you can download it. You can share it with your friends. We're really excited to bring you Osmoji. Uh, we are also excited to bring you one from us, Junior. When we were at festivals last year, a lot of times people would come up to the table with their family, and their family often included pretty young kids, kids who were just a little too young to play Home From Oz. Again, Home From Oz, we usually suggest for kids maybe around seven or eight and up, but Oz uh, Junior, so Home From Oz Junior, this is Junior. This is just a prototype. Um, this is going to be a way for people to play a simplified version of the game for kids to work on their counting skills. All you have to do is get 10 bricks. Now, there is not a lot of the small idiosyncrasies of the game. There's not even all of the characters in Home From Oz Jr., but this is a way to get those kids three, four, five, six years old playing a game that may quickly become their favorite story, if it's not already. Oh, absolutely. You know, I think of those those children who grow up and don't like to play games. And it's because they never had Home from Us Jr. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, to, to, to have a game that, that is enjoyable for the youngest of the youngest, and to be able to then grow them up in those game-playing skills so that they can be more competent, and we can enjoy playing the full game with them, once they've gone through the steps of learning Home From Us Junior. So around Christmas time, we got a chance to start testing out Home From Us Junior with some of our family members. And I have a cousin who's about four years old. He had just turned four. And we tried playing the game with him. And he absolutely fell in love yes. with it. For the next two or three times that we saw him, every time we walked into a house, he was like, can we play the Dorothy game? Can we play the Dorothy game? <laughs> it was great. It was the cutest thing ever, but it really helped him. He was able to, to count the amount of bricks that he had. He was able uh, to use the witch um, to go ahead and um, stop whoever he was playing against. And he even had an evil cackle going on. That's great. Now, granted, I don't think he's actually ever seen The Wizard of Oz, but he has seen the VeggieTales version quite a few times. The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. And so he was able to connect with these characters pretty quickly because he remembered them from that rendition. Oh, yeah. Well, like, it, it was 
it was amazing and it was it was incredible for us to be able to take the game to an extended family event right in the holidays and be able to have something to, to share even with the youngest members of the family. So you can see that this is definitely our prototype deck. Um, no, you're not going to do this, are you? I am. I'm going to call us out. So oh. um, this is a, this is, we have like three copies of this game. It is very early still in our prototypes. And, and like we mentioned before, all of our beta testing pretty much has stopped um, with 2020 shaping up to be the way that it is. But um, we obviously, we, we didn't proofread well enough because this is not a tornado. This is a tornado. This is a monkey. And if we're trying to teach kids- We just need a better designer. <laughs> how to read, we messed up. Luckily this hasn't gone to print yet. So we are still in the, in the testing prototype phase of this one. But if you are, are excited to have Home From Oz Jr. Uh, for some of the, the Oz lovers in your life that are just a little bit too tiny to play the full game, let us know and we will keep this moving along. We want to take a quick minute to show you some of the merchandise that goes along with our Home From Oz game because we love our artwork and we hope that you will too. Now the easiest way to purchase the game is straight through our website, homefromoz.com. You can purchase all of the merchandise that we're about to show you and more, as well as the game and any updates and expansions straight through there. You can also find us on Amazon. So if you would like to purchase through Amazon, feel free to look us up, just home from us. Yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. So when, when you come and you find us online, you're gonna find some mugs and um, each one kind of has a different character on it and they all have our logo and they each have a little word written down the side. So in this case, we've got Toto, home from Oz, and he's loyal, right? Like who's more loyal than Toto? Uh, or we have Glinda the Good and Goodness. Oh, so it's just this way that you can kind of enjoy the story. Like every morning you get up, you have your cup of coffee and enjoy. We also have our frame prints. It's kind of funny. We we got this. We got these printed as posters for our booths at the festivals, and people were like, "Can we have your poster?" <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, "Well, well, now you can." <laughs> <laughs> the the first one that we went to um, in Ionia, Michigan, we didn't have much other than two big copies of our poster and a table and a couple copies of the game. Not even to purchase, just to sit down and play with us. And so we were doing pre-orders at the time and we did, we had people come up and they're like, how much, how much for your poster? And we're like, well, we, we don't have, we don't have anything yeah. else that even has our name or a logo on it. So if, if you take our poster, we got nothing. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to make sure that if you love the artwork as much as we do, that you can take it home. So this is our original box design. Any of you who have that first print of the game have a green box and this is what you see on the front of it. But if you want it hanging on your wall, we've got, two different frames for you to choose from and a framed print. Yeah. And we have, as if you've been paying attention, uh -huh. uh, we have all of these canvases with our characters on them too. Um, we've tried to select a size that's just right, not too small, not too big, and that they can be paired up in really cool and interesting ways. So you can have Dorothy and Toto together, or you can have Dorothy and her favorite friend and companion. Um, and we know, we each have our favorites, right? I personally like the lion. I seem to get him every time we play. It's uh, not fair. <laughs> I think he's wonderful. Uh, but today I'm drinking out of my scarecrow mug. Uh, so check out check out online. You can see some other some other merchandise that we have too. We've got we have some stickers up there, uh, and then all of these favorites. So and we even have Ozma on a canvas. So. Although you can't play with her yet in the game, if you would like the rightful ruler on your wall, you can pick her up as well. And if you have any questions while you're shopping, just reach out to us on social media. We're really active there. You reach out. We wanna thank you so much for spending this time with us. You all have been wonderful. Yes. We know that you have a lot of options to choose from. This virtual Oz conference has so much going on. And if you chose to spend this time here with Home From Oz, we want to say that we love you. Yeah, thank you so much. And we hope that you will love our game. So if you haven't played, 
make it happen. <laughs> if you haven't already, we hope that you will follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are in all of those places at Home For Moms and we would love to talk with you. If you've got questions, if you wanna know about the merch, we're, we're here, just reach out. You're gonna get me or Jessica and we can answer your questions. To come. Absolutely. We are super excited to see what 2021 will bring because hopefully we will be doing this in person next year. As much fun as this virtual conference Absolutely. is, it is it is unique and it is fun. And hey, we're in the comfort of our own house. However, we would love to see you face to face next year, 2020, 20, 2021, not 2020. 2021, it's gonna be great. Hey, yes. we wanna get to know you. So. These are unprecedented times. We can't meet face to face and we can't play the game together, but hopefully we can still connect and get to know you. Yeah, so we'll see you soon. Thanks for sticking around. Bye. Bye.